How's it going everybody Chadley here and today we're gonna be looking at God Fist Amara This is a new Amara build based around melee, but also not really melee So basically what we are going to be doing is when we activate our action skill We're gonna release a Nova around us and if anything is inside that Nova, they basically just disappear It is super super cool. You guys will do be doing millions upon millions of damage There's many many times you guys are going to hit max damage doing this, and it is just ridiculous. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen this around lately, but the Stinger Shield is insane. Shout out to a guy named Quag. He was the one who kind of originally founded the interaction with this, and it is really, really cool. He did it on Flak. I believe Thick Filet showcased it on his channel. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely go check out that. But basically, we took that central idea with the action skill start stinger, and then we moved that over here to Amara and just made some changes and did some experiments trying to figure out what works best. And one of my other favorite parts about this build is that we are using fists over matter as kind of our main action skill, which I personally love. You guys don't have to use this. You can always use ties that bind. But I personally love Fist Over Matter. It's just a ton of fun to use and actually can do some work. But I will give you guys options for each of these two and you guys can decide which one you want to use. So let's go ahead and look at our weapons first off. So basically, we're going to be using a Face Puncher. We're going to be using two of them actually. So the first one, I like to have 390. One, we can get a lot of one shots with it. And two, this 390 anointment is going to boost the damage that our Nova does from our Stinger. So if an enemy is above that 90% health threshold, that Nova is going to deal 300% more damage to him. So that's like one of the main ways we are able to insta-kill so many of these enemies and just deal those millions upon millions of damage. So I highly, highly recommend you guys get your hands on a 390 face puncher. It doesn't have to be redundant. That is completely up to you. Sometimes the times 7 would be better just because you would have to reload less. But I just like using a times 14 and getting as much damage as we can. And then as our second face puncher, I like to just have another one, but this one with 100 melee, just in case an enemy is below that 90% threshold. Like a lot of the takedown bosses and their immunity phases, we can't really use 390 effectively throughout the whole fight. So I'll switch over to this one after they're below that 90% threshold. And then as our other weapon, we're going to be using a Linoge. But it can basically be any weapon where you see 120% melee damage on it and has the 390 anointment on it because melee damage and obviously the 390 anointment are going to help out our Nova because if you guys aren't aware, the Stinger is a melee Nova. So that's where like all these crazy interactions come from. It's not a normal Nova. This is all scaled off of melee and stuff. So that's why we are trying to abuse that as much as possible. So this Linoge with 120 melee and 390 works great for just one hitting people as you guys saw with like Tront and stuff at the start. Of and finally, our last weapon is going to be a weapon with 200 splash on it. Now you guys can't see it because there's too many weapon effects on this card, but this one has 60% melee. The Gargoyle can roll with 120% melee like this Linoge has. So if you guys can get your hands on a 120 melee, with the 200 splash that is going to be your best bet i use this one for when i'm really trying to kill things with the nova that aren't really above that 90 percent threshold so like when i'm insta killing wotan and things like that i'll throw out to this gargoyle and use this one because that splash damage is going to help us and that melee damage is going to help us you don't need that 120 melee um, but if you guys want the perfect one that's the one to get and then like i said we're going to be using a stinger with the action skill start effect you guys can get this in the guardian takedown and the nova is going to be the damage type of the resistance of it so i only have this radiation one if you guys can farm like the main elements and just switch them out for whatever you need it on that would definitely be your best bet but obviously i know they're a little hard to get your hands on so i just have this radiation one and it works perfectly fine for all sorts of content personally and then our grenade really doesn't matter i just use an it's piss in case i need to debuff an enemy but the main point of the grenade is just the bonus element. I'll usually switch this between incendiary, radiation, and corrosive, depending on what I am doing. And I will just kind of combine that with our action skill element and just kind of make whatever combo work. And that's usually the best way to go in my opinion. And then if you guys want to use fist over matter, 
Spiritual Driver is probably your best bet. And then you pair that with an Elemental Projector White Elephant. Because obviously the projector is going to give us a bunch of extra damage from the driver self-dotting us. But if you guys don't want to use Fist Over Matter and you only want to use Ties of Bind, just use a Phase Zerker. And then for your artifact, switch over to a Shockstone White Elephant. So our melees are just always going to have 80% bonus shock damage. And it's awesome. So that's why I really, really like Shockstone for this build. And then obviously still use a white elephant. That's probably your best bet in terms of just like normal melee type stuff with the face punchers is the white elephant. But those two combos are usually my go to's. I don't do too many other things. The only time I'll really do something different is for those Tront insta kills that we saw at the start of the video. I will use an elemental projector static charge because I can slide and then get bonus shock damage on my next melee which is really good for Trant and his shield. So I'll just slide and then grasp him and then he disappears. So that's what I was using there. But otherwise, that's really all I'll use. You can use Unleash the Dragon. This works great. This is originally what Quag used on Flak with the Stinger when he kind of did this er interaction. So this thing does work great. I personally don't like it that much here on Amara, but this is definitely viable. Yeah, overall, that is our gear. I really don't use much else. I just stick with these four weapons, so I highly recommend that you guys get these weapons if possible. But let's go ahead and look over at our skill tree. We're just going to start here in Fist of the Elements, and like I said, we're using Fist over Matter. And then usually for most things, I'll use the Soul Fire, Fire Action Skill Element. But then if I'm doing takedowns, I will switch over to the Corrosive one. But I usually only use those unless it's a super specific scenario like Trant. Then I'll switch over to the Shock one. But those are usually my two go-tos. And then an R Augment is going to be Revelation. This is going to give us a bunch of Nova damage from it. And it works very, very well as just an action skill damaging Augment. Especially if you guys decide to use Ties That Bind. Those two work fantastic together. But now let's go down our skill tree here. So we're going to do five points into Anima. Three points into Steady Hands. And then five points into Infusion. We're going to heal off of the initial shot from our Face Puncher. Because obviously it's not an Elemental. But when we convert it to Elemental, we're going to get the Sustainment to proc and heal us. Which is very nice. And then we're going to do five points into Tempest for that Elemental damage. One point into Illuminated Fist for the melee damage. One point into Dread. Because when we can have more gun damage while an enemy is grasped. And that does affect our Face Puncher. And then one point into sustainment. We don't need indiscriminate or deep well with this build. A lot of the things that we're using are non-elemental and indiscriminate does not work with the face puncher. So we're just going to get that one point into sustainment for that healing. And also that's going to bring us down to fist over matter. So let's move over to our brawl skill tree. We're going to do three points into personal space, two points into clarity, and then five points into arms deal. And then one point into find your center. The mindfulness and the helping hands is just from our class one. And these are really the only things you need. And obviously the melee damage and melee range is really nice for find your center. Now taking a look at our blue skill tree. If you guys are using fist over matter like I do, I'm going to use do harm. And even the times I do switch over to phase zerker and like ties that bind, I just keep this on. It really doesn't matter. We still deal uh, enough damage, even though it doesn't affect ties that bind. But if you guys really only plan to use Ties That Bind, take these five points, put three into Fast Hands, uh, two into Violent Tapestry, so we'll go three and two here, and then one point into Alacrity, and then take the three points that we'd normally put into Awakening into Alacrity, so we'd have four total here, and that would be that whole skill tree for Ties That Bind. But for Fist Over Matter, obviously we're going to be using Do Harm to boost the damage on it, and then we're going to do one point into Tapestry for the status effects, three points into Transcend, and then five points into Restless because we definitely need that cooldown because a lot of our damage is coming from when we start our action skill. So we need to be starting it as much as possible. And then one points into Ascendant to boost the Revelation damage. And then three points into Laid Bear so we do increased damage against the enemies that we hit with our action skill. Three points into Wrath. Three points into Awakening to boost our Rush Stacks and in turn do harm damage. And then one point into Remnant for that overkill orb it's going to hit for max damage a lot with this build so definitely get used to that and then one point into avatar 
so we can activate our actions heal twice and have bonus rush stacks. Now, many of you guys are probably aware of this by now, but we're going to be using the Groundbreaker Guardian rank. It's at the end of the Enforcer skill tree here, and we're going to be abusing the crap out of this. This thing is going to help us do so much more damage, so I highly, highly recommend you guys have this enabled when you are playing this build. So definitely, definitely unlock it and make sure it's active. But let's go ahead and take a look at our modifiers. I personally like to use Speed Demon. And then we'll do Healy Avenger for getting our health and shield back. Just super easy one to deal with. And then I have Laser Fair on. I don't really notice this damaging me too much. And also I can get a lot of second wins off of it. And then our Very Hard, there's really no good ones for this build at all, unfortunately. Postmortem is probably the least annoying, but occasionally I will punch and kill something and then that postmortem skull will spawn immediately and just insta down me. So you guys can kind of play around with the different very hards, but I usually end up just going with postmortem. So real quick, I just want to give you guys a quick little tutorial on how I personally play this build. So also just to note, this face puncher that is black is the 390 and then this red one is the 100 melee. I will basically almost always have this one out. But basically all we're gonna do is self dot ourselves. And if we get close to enemies and they break our shield, they'll just instantly die. Or if we grasp them, they will just instantly die from that Nova and it works very nice. And then while we're waiting for our fists to kill things or waiting for them to cool down, we'll just shoot things with the face puncher. And it's really not a big deal. And then once there's more people, just grasp someone and they will die. It is, it is very nice. And then normally you can just kind of hang out around your fists and they can just kind of deal damage for you and kill some things and then usually inside of these scaled up activities like guardian takedown and true malawan takedown usually if i'm trying to do it fast i will just use ties that bind ties that bind is just the best action skill in the game so that's usually a slightly better bet than fists over matter but you guys can seriously use whatever you would like. So yeah, I just switched over to Ties That Bind and I'm gonna show you guys like how that works. So right now I have that 390 Linoge out and when you call in the Ties That Bind, everything is just going to die. And then you can also punch some things once you get that Groundbreaker damage. And it's just super, super easy. Just get close to things, grasp, and they will die right there. We did 900 and whatever million in just one Remnant Orb. It's a little insane. And right here, we can just grasp and everybody disappears. It is so, so cool, and this is one of the most fun builds we've really ever been playing with, and I, I personally really, really do enjoy it. And then finally, because you guys always have questions, our head that we're using for this is the Killer Kitsune from DLC 3, and then our skin, we're using Neon Dreams, and then I just changed the colors to this orange and really dark red combo, so we get that nice effect. And then when we're using the fire action skill element on this build, it just all comes together super nice. You won't see it in your menus and stuff, but this is what all your friends would see if you're playing with them. We're all matched up and it just looks really, really awesome. But yeah, guys, that is God Fist Omara. Hopefully you enjoyed. And if you guys play this build, hopefully you have a ton of fun just looking at enemies and making them disappear. It is a ton of fun. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you leave a thumbs up on it to let me know. If you guys want to subscribe and see more Borderlands content, I would definitely appreciate it. We're very, very close to 30,000 subscribers. So if you guys want to help me hit that number, make sure you are subscribed. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys over on Twitch every single night right around 7, 8 p.m. Central Time. But have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.